Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Sunday night. If you're watching this Sunday, maybe you're watching this Monday. Uh, great to be with you guys. Another awesome chat lined up for this week. We got one of our own with us who has transported to warmer weather and SEC football. <laughs> Jackson Jones, what's up, brother? How you doing, Jake? How you doing, guys? I'm doing great. So thanks for your time, man, and, and doing this. And it's great to see what God's doing in your life. Um, if you guys don't know Jackson, he's been in the, he's been in FCA um, the pa past few, well, not last year, but a couple years before that, I think he might've caught like what, two, two of the training camps, our he first trained. two. Um, and then he graduated obviously from Grand Island and is now at Ole Miss. He's got some viral 40-yard dash videos out there. <laughs> you want to YouTube him. But he's a he's a DB and a wide receiver at Ole Miss um, going into his second year. And you guys were pretty pretty good last year. I mean, number I was looking online at ESPN, number nine in the FBS national ranking. That's insane, man. It was awesome. It was a crazy experience. What's it like? Going from Grand Island to the SEC, man, like that's that's crazy. You're on CBS and ESPN. You guys are playing LSU, Alabama, Auburn. I mean, what what's it like? What what what's your world like these days? Yeah, I mean, altogether, it's pretty much extremely different than high school football in every way. You know, I'll start, you know, started at high school. It'd be cool if we hit the local news once in a while and now each week we're preparing for yeah the whole country's gonna watch you uh, you got a whole fan base rooting for you a lot of people who hate you you know every little thing's gonna be critiqued whether you're on the field or even on the sideline everybody sees everything and you know I had a little warm-up session when I I first went to Stony Brook it was a little smaller D1 but the SEC is ridiculous it's the fan bases are huge football is the NFL down here college football it's the NFL, and they treat it like that. You know, so one of the craziest things when I first got here was when we were watching film, and I played DB to start, and we're watching film on how to cover receivers, and we're watching Ole Miss guys covering Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, those guys. And to me, it was insane. It took a little adjusting to get used to stuff like that, but <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, he smokes. Like, what if you got in there against those guys, man? That's insane. Yeah, it's big time. You, you got to adjust pretty quick. Yeah. Wow. So I'm sure that there's a much bigger time commitment as a D1 athlete versus high school. How is college different um, from what you were used to, like, sports-wise? And, like, how could, how could some of the, the high school athletes that we have that are coming up like prepare to, to go play college sports? Yeah, I mean, high school itself is pretty tiring too. You know, you got school for a full day and you go out and do two, three hours practice, whether it's football or anything else. Um, college though, it's, it is the next level. It is football does became or any college sport becomes a big focus in your life. You know, they tell you, you got to keep school first, but it's hard when most of your days consumed by your sport. So my day, I'll wake up usually around like 5 a.m. I got football from like 5.30, 6 to noon every single day, Monday through Saturday. And then, so that's like, what, five, six hours a day. And then I got to go do school, class, homework. Sometimes we got night meetings to evaluate the practice from the previous day. Um, so it's a huge commitment. Your Your whole life is given away. You kind of lose that whole social life, so. As a high schooler, if you're wanting to go to the college level, like my greatest advice is, first of all, make sure you want to, because make sure you, you definitely love your sport. Make sure God's calling you to that, because um, you are pretty much giving up your life for a few years. Um, but, you know, you got to be dedicated. You got to put in the work. It all starts in high school. I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't put in the work in high school, if I didn't trust God. If I did, you know, if I slacked, I wouldn't be here. You got, you got to put in the effort each and every day. You got to want it. You got to work for it because not everybody's a five-star recruit. I wasn't a five-star recruit. I was just a kid out of Grand Island, New York, and it's pretty hard to get recruited that way. So 
you got to make sure you want it, trust the Lord, and, you know, he'll take it from there. So good, man. Um, I see you're repping the FCA swagger. Let's go. Yeah. Ole Miss FCA. Ole Miss edition. So we were talking and you're leading. Um, you guys got a pretty good group of athletes that come together on your college campus. Um, what's FCA like in college and how is that helping you to kind of be around other athletes? Like you mentioned the social side of things and like your time being in such a high demand, like, how is how important it is is it for you to get together at FCA with some other athletes and like just unwind a little bit? Yeah, FCA has pretty much been it's, you know it saved my life at times too. Here, it's it's definitely like the greatest escape I've had. You know, day in day out, we're putting in the work. My uh, recruiting coach told me college sports it's it's a game of high highs and low lows. So you know you'll do something really good and it'll make your entire week. You'll make one mistake and they're going to treat it like it's the worst thing to ever happen. And it'll ruin your whole week or month if you let it. So FCA has been a great escape for me to get together with, you know, like-minded people like me um, who still play their sport. They're still full dedicated into what they do, but God's their focal point. So, you know, it, it's not some big flashy event that we have. It's, it's more like a small group and we get together, talk about the word um, how it impacts our personal life, but mostly as a student and athlete, because sports can easily become who you are once you get to college. Everything you're defined as, everyone talks about your sport. You are your sport. Well, FCA has been an outlet for me to say, no, you're not your sport. You're not the performance you put out on that field. God gives you your identity. Um, so you need to you know, find your roots, find your ground in that. So it's definitely been the best outlet for me. Um, whether I'm being a follower and listening and learning, even if it's stuff I already know, it has a completely different purpose and a different message being where I am now. I understand it better. Um, or if I'm going up there and I'm leading others, um, I'm able, I'm able to, you know, have a little, you know, spotlights on me, but I'm reflecting it to the Lord. It's, it's me leading, helping others. They can come to me, but it's more like a brotherhood, you know, so FCA has been, been a great opportunity for me to get together with these types of guys. It's incredible. Um, you're also leading in FCA too. You mentioned doing some speaking, stuff like that. Um, what does that look like? Like, how do you, like one thing that we've been working with the athletes on this year is like inviting their teammates into studying the Bible or coming to FCA. And I know you mentioned you bring some of the guys on your team. How is that scary to ask people to come to FCA with you? Like, how do you, how have you found God walking with you as you've been trying to reach your team with the gospel. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a good question because a lot of the times, you know, like you might think like it it can be very hard to do that. And actually, in some ways, it gets it gets easier in college in some ways because you you've got a different perspective on life. It's you know you escape that high school round that you're in the same daily thing every day. You have a lot more freedom in college, and it's more like you can be who you are without everyone making fun of you. And stuff like that um you know but you know it all starts from high school if you do that in high school it'll 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 show up in college too so i i did that a lot in high school to get out of my comfort zone you know people are gonna make fun of you for being a christian for thinking different things for going giving up your sunday night doing whatever but a lot of people wouldn't be following the lord if you don't do that so you know co college has been a great opportunity for me to be a leader for people to look at me at football and be like, oh, he's a Christian. He leads at FCA. And they look at you different. They might they might make fun of you. They might not like, you know, what you do, what you preach. But at the end of the day, when they're having a bad day, when they need help, they're going to run to you because they know you have something different. You know, They know you have God. So being a leader can be very challenging at times. It can, it can be hard and comfortable. But at the end of the day, you're repping your king. You're doing the – you know, what he did for you. So you're going to get it all back someday. Um, and ultimately bringing more people to his kingdom. So it's all worth it. So good. Um, besides, like you said, stepping out in high school, like if you can do it there, um, <laughs> it gets easier, right? Um, yeah. And you and your brother were so amazing. Just such amazing leaders at Grand Island and your church and FCA. 
Um, um, so, but like, aside from stepping out and kind of not being afraid of the, the persecution or the, the people making fun of you, like, what are some other things that you did in high school that you look back on now spiritually? And you're like, I'm, man, I'm so glad I did that, you know, um, from like your church or just your own personal walk with the Lord. Like, what are some of the things that you would say really were building blocks for you to be leading where you are now? Hmm. That's a good question, because I got a I got a very interesting perspective, but it can probably relate to a lot of people, especially if you've been in the church your whole life. Me and Brady, like you said, we a lot of the times we're, you know, we were big on leading and going out and helping others and doing all this that stemmed a lot from being pastors, kids, being in the church our whole life. Um, and it just kind of came naturally to us. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I don't want you guys all to think I walked that perfectly and faithfully up until now. When I first got to college, I, I fell apart for a little bit. I had a season where I kind of was losing who I was. I was losing that that purpose. I, I was just blinded by so much because I didn't have that church I was used to. I didn't have my dad there. Didn't have my family. I didn't have FCA. And I kind of lost, lost the whole light, that spark for a minute. And a lot of it was because I was so invested into helping others and doing what I was supposed to do. But I didn't find that one-on-one -on -one individual relationship every second with the Lord when I first got there. And that all stems from where you guys are right now in high school. It stems from, yeah, it's great. It's amazing to go to FCA, to bring others, go to youth group, go to church. But it's just like your sport. You got you to gotta put in the work on a daily basis. If you want to get better, if you want to go to the next level, you're going to have to train more. It's the same with your faith. You're going to fall apart if you don't have a firm foundation with the Lord. Um, you got to work on that individually. Uh, you got to, you know, a lot of people just say, you know, you got to pray more. You got to read more. That's true. If you, if you really want to grow, if you really want to have that relationship and to stand firm and to help others better, you're going to grow individually with the Lord. And it all stems from there. Every part of it stems from right there. So implementing that now will make your life a lot easier by the time you get to where I'm at. Uh, whether you're playing in college sport or not, it's going to all pay off. You mentioned um, kind of <clears throat> being a little shell-shocked, just like going to college your first year, just being in a different environment and things like that. What what were some of the, like, how did God, how did you get out of that? You know what I mean? Because we go through that every day. Every single one of us goes through that every day. We're like, man, I haven't, I haven't opened my Bible in a couple of days or man, I like I'm reading the Bible and it doesn't make sense because you know, my, I haven't been praying and like my, my spiritual life is like, you know, oh, it's, just, it's so easy for us to lose track, even just in the moment. Right. Um, so just what, what advice would you give to somebody who maybe they're changing schools next year, they're go going from middle school to high school, they're going from high school to college, like in that transition, how, what did God do to kind of like get you through some of that? Yeah, well, again, I'm going to relate it to sports and what that one coach said to me, where, you know, football can be a game of high highs and low lows that also transcend into your faith. Um, you see countless stories in the Bible, you know, Jesus working through people, Jesus giving, Jesus allowing people to be healed, giving them talents, letting them use it, uplifting them, and how their life can be from there. And, you know, it only looks good. And then there's going to be low lows. And it's, you know, the Lord allows that. It's not, it's not always his wish, but he allows it, bad things to happen to us. And that's when we'll get trapped in the dark. Um, it's the second you realize that, that is life, and that is okay to happen, and the Lord is still walking with you, even though it looks like he's not, even though it looks like you're trapped, even though it looks like you're falling. The Lord is still there. If you don't give up hope in those dark moments, in those times where you feel alone, in those times where you feel it's hopeless, like that's when you'll come out on the other side stronger than ever. A lot of my growing came from that. It came from trusting the Lord in the dark times. And sometimes it came from me falling on my face, messing up. It came from me 
choosing sin instead of the Lord and then seeing how much worse I ended up because of that. At the end of the day, Jesus is the answer. Jesus has always been the answer, and he's going to be the one to pick you back up. You might think you have it, especially in college. Everybody has a point in their life where, you know, they're on their own. You got freedom. You're away from your parents. You get to do whatever you want. You think you have it all together. And then there's going to come a time where you realize, oh, maybe I don't. Maybe God is the answer. Sometimes it'll take falling on your face. But, you know, one, an example for that was when I entered the transfer portal. Transfer portal was a very dark time for me. It, it was very hard because I knew I wanted to get out of Stony. I knew, I knew the Lord was calling me out of Stony Brook. And I felt like he was calling me into bigger, better. But I didn't have an answer to that. It, there was no clear answer to where I was going to go. And there was times where it seemed hopeless, where I didn't think I was going to be playing a college sport anymore. And, I mean, it was a month straight of every day trying and nothing coming back. Not getting an offer because I didn't really have film. You know, everything was going bad that you could think of. The Lord came out of nowhere one of the last weeks, provided opportunities with talking to coaches, coaches offering me, and then I ended up at all Miss. And it all came from being in that dark time, and putting my full faith and trust in the Lord, and I came out on the other side. It's incredible, man. Bro, we appreciate you being so real with us and, <laughs> you know, not not trying to church it up, you know, just being yeah. honest and real means a lot because um, we all go through it. Uh, well, we got like uh, maybe one or two minutes left. So what, clo- what closing thoughts do you got for us? We got, um, we got a few weeks left, maybe about f- four weeks left here of um, leadership training, uh, we're working through our E3 playbooks. We got a couple more in-person events. We're stoked about. Awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, man, we're just getting getting in the word and getting equipped to lead our teams. Any any closing thoughts? Anything else you want to add in, just about leadership in general, or, or anything like that? Yeah, one thing that I learned in my FCA over here, um, mm-hmm. and that I'd love to tell all you guys is the truth is some of you guys are going to go on to play the next level of college. And some of you aren't, and that is okay. Because guess what? There's going to be a time when I'm not going to be either. Football is not going to be a part of my daily life. Um, everything you're learning now matters. Every little thing you're doing now is going to matter. Because what are we? When the day finishes, we're not an athlete. We're not a student. We're not whatever our major is. We're not whatever we do on a daily basis. We're the Lord's and we're his weapon that he uses um, to help and go serve others. Sports is just an outlet for that. Right now, for you guys and right now for me, sports is just nothing but an outlet that the Lord is going to use us for. So don't think, you know, if you don't make it or if you do make it, that that's what defines you. Because God is going to use you no matter what. So keep working, keep grinding, keep doing everything. Because uh, everything you're doing right now matters. Yeah. Preach it, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, would you pray, would you uh, pray for these guys and gals and, and close us out here? For sure, for sure. All right, dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for an opportunity that you know I get to speak. I get to provide what I've learned, the ups and the downs of my life. Um, God, I pray it can impact somebody else's. Lord, I pray for all these kids. Um, we're striving to be better for you. They wouldn't be doing this if they didn't want to be better, um, better athlete for you, but a better person for you, a better, a better son or daughter for you, Lord. Um, I pray that they can use everything that they've been learning uh, in the FCA to impact others, to go and help others, to go and bring others to you, God. I pray that their sports, their performance does not define them but it's what they do for you. It's their love for you that defines them, God. Uh, Show them all the road they're supposed to go on, their purpose, um, and help them impact the lives of others through whatever they're called to do through you, God. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jackson. You're the man, bro. We'll uh, we'll be keeping up with you and following you for sure, man. And uh, (laughs) we're all Ole Miss fans up here in Buffalo now, for sure. (laughs) <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs>
hundred percent, bro. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Of course. You too, man. All right, guys. Hey, finish, uh, finish this week weekend out strong, get some time with the Lord and we'll see you tomorrow.